Here we are, it's cold, it's snowy, it's dark, it's Helsinki time. So it's time for Ricotec 2019. Next interview will be together with Carl Christensen from uh, Spacemaker AI. A lot of pop tech companies talk about artificial intelligence, but not everybody is using it. But this company is really awesome. 100 plus employees, so really making a huge impact with Spacemaker AI. I talked to Carl Christensen, CTO of Spacemaker. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to speak to him. Are you going to watch with me? Hi, we are here with uh, Carl Christensen from uh, Spacemaker AI. Hi. Hello. Can you please tell us a little bit what you do at Spacemaker? Yeah, sure. So we're a product company uh, on a mission to build better and more sustainable cities. Um, and uh, we uh, were founded in Norway about three years ago. And we're now about 100 people. Wow. Um, mostly mathematicians, data scientists, um, software developers, but also architects and urban planners and, and property developers working together to create this product. All people from the Nordics? Uh, no, uh, we, we're, we're getting pretty international. Uh, we have offices uh, in, in Norway, UK, Barcelona, Sweden, and also Boston. Um, and working to get more diverse in that sense every day, I guess. So what is your ambition as Spacemaker AI? Well, um, to give a little bit of a context, like the, the world's cities are growing ex exponentially. And I guess many in this industry knows that, that we need to build something along the lines of the city of New York every month for the next 40 years, which yeah. is huge. That's amazing. And, yeah, that's and um, the, the world's cities aren't equipped for that, but the construction industry isn't really either because it's not digitized and it's not productive. But also one of the big challenges with this is that so much of the world's carbon emissions come from, comes from buildings. So we need to build smarter, faster and more sustainably. And we think that we need to do things very differently to be able to do that. So we built a platform for design and planning, um, real estate developments in cities that uh, uses computational design and AI and cloud computing power to allow uh, real estate developers, architects and other stakeholders like um, uh, city planners to design together and generate and explore and test the science um, using uh, strong near real-time analytics of every effect that um, those proposals have both on sustainability and profitability and then lets them iteratively work together and optimize the designs for those trade-offs to create better um, designs much faster and we think that that's uh, a really important factor in actually handling this urban growth with us in a sustainable way. Yeah. And our ambition is to make this the uh, de facto pla platform for planning real estate developments in, in the Nordics and in Europe and in the world. And we're already seeing very significant uh, traction for that in the Nordics and seeing developers actually changing their whole uh, way of working to adapt to this way of this tool. Well, what, what kind of technologies do you use? Because it's uh, Spacemaker AI, so yeah. it's artificial intelligence probably yeah. what you use, but what different kind of technologies else do you yeah. use? I can imagine like uh, generative design is being yeah. used. Yeah, so it's um, it, it's it's a real mix up of different things because it's a really ambitious, the, the, the kind of core idea is to bring everything together in one platform. So we do use, use a lot of machine learning, but we do use other algorithms and other modeling, ways of modeling the world as well. Um, and the, we generally kind of say that it's an AI like a self-driving car is an AI. It's a lot of different things coming together to create a result. So we, we do use uh, generative design, we use uh, optimization, um, we, we use simulation models of the world, <clears throat> and we use machine learning models uh, for many things like um, surrogate models for understanding the physical environment, for example, and how um, how you would change a design to make it better for many factors at once. Nice. So what are your competitors? Do you have competitors? Well, um, there's, there's many ways of looking at that, but, but we, uh, we don't think that anyone else is really talking about um, combining and, and changing the whole planning phase and design phase into one value chain and one process and bring that into one platform. Um, so from our perspective, our biggest competitors are, is, is really the, the process that we have today, which is 
pretty manual. There are di digital elements and digital tools doing single things. It's all segmented. But it all seg it's all segmented. Yeah. So, so our biggest competitor is, uh, is the existing process, basically. Can you tell us a little bit about your customers and partners that you work together with? Yeah. So um, we work with, with the real estate developers from the very beginning. Uh, so the, the first thing we did was, was uh, go to real estate developers with the PowerPoint and, and asking them if they would understand this kind of tool. Um, and we work with a lot of large uh, property developers in the Nordics now. And, and, and a lot of them are, are changing, their, changing their processes, um, uh, integrating SpaceMaker. And then uh, we've started working with uh, more of uh, the developers also in, in Western Europe. And we'll be expanding in that area as fast as we can and then move to the rest of the world. Nice. And you made like, an, we are here at Ricotech in Finland. Yeah. Oh, but I think you made like a huge announcement this, this morning. Can you tell us a little bit what you are going to do? Yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's a great testament to, to the kind of uh, partnerships that we want to do with, with the real estate developers that uh, one of the largest developers in the Nordics and, and one of the first to work with us, uh, a company called Ubus. Um, they uh, have uh, almost 6,000 uh, housing units under development right now, which is, which is larger than the Nordics. And um, they're uh, making SpaceMaker their standard platform for all real estate projects and changing their processes really fundamentally and using that as a digital transformational tool. Um, and it's, for us, it's a multi-million dollar deal. And it's also uh, a great testament to uh, the effect that this way of working can have, and that um, Obosat has used this many times uh, over the last year, sees the value uh, being so, so huge that they actually will invest in their own digital change transformation in the company. So to congrats adapt to it. on that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. So how do you see like, the construction industry to really adapt or transform into uh, digitally? Mm. That, that's a good is question. Is it happening or is it, uh, well, what is your um, point on that? I, uh, what we see is that uh, the construction industry is the least digitized industry in the world and also the least productive, which is disappointing. Um, and yeah, what also like a huge, uh, uh, it's, a huge, it's a huge opportunity, yeah, right? Huge opportunity, of course, yes. of course. Um, but one of the reasons is probably that it's really complex uh, as an industry and it's really local. And that, that means that it takes more time to feel the pressure from the outside um, than many other industries have faced. But we think it's happening now. But we're also seeing that the, the most of the investment is going into kind of making construction less costly. But uh, research shows that the biggest value creation is really in transforming the planning phase, which is what we're working with, because that will kind of uh, propagate down into the construction phase as well. So um, we think that that's where the change needs to happen now. So we're talking about construction, about real estate, but where does it place like play, uh, space maker into this whole whole prop tech uh, debate? Well, that's interesting. Um, I guess putting labels on it is hard, and some people call, talk about con tech and prop tech and uh, CRE tech, maybe even. Yes. Um, the most important thing for us is to uh, to focus on what will have the most kind of fundamental effect on the construction life cycle, and that is uh, by far improving the design and feasibility planning phase. So uh, we're squarely in that space and uh, we think that you could call that prop tech, but the most important thing is that it's a huge challenge to the industry and it needs to be handled with a digital approach. Yeah, so what is needed for a successful transformation uh, for the construction industry? Yeah, so uh, what are the biggest challenges for them to adapt really like the artificial intelligence uh, I, stuff? I think um, the most important thing is the, the uh, daring to uh, really change. So and it's mindset about, it's it's mindset. about people. It's a lot about mindset and that's what we're seeing with like when you introduce uh, a product uh, that is especially when it's based on AI that gives you a lot of new capabilities. You need to be uh, really motivated to adapt to that, to, to make use of that, to, so that it gives you superpowers uh, and not just becomes something that, uh, another tool. And, and uh, we, we see that the, the, the sooner uh, a customer understands that they need to invest in that, the, the more results they will get. Yeah, so what do you see happening when you start working together with those companies that you all work with? Uh, what do you see happening at those employees that work, work together with SpaceMaker AI? I can imagine that they are beginning to smile because they love what they, they, they do. Yeah. They get a lot of time back. Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not just time, it's, it's, the, 
it's the effect of kind of being able to collaborate with 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 much less friction because the uh, the platform takes out a lot of the hard uh, work and also guesswork from what what people are doing. So when you have a transparency of the effects of a design, you can discuss kind of what design you want uh, with with much less effort. Um, so it makes the collaborative process much more efficient. And we're also seeing that. Uh, customers are even uh, taking um, municipalities into the platform and working together, working on master planning, for example, instead of having zoning and then reacting to that, they're actually working together because the municipality gets so much transparency and insight from that yeah. so that they can actually trust the results instead of uh, putting a restraint on the developer. So that's also, we think that's really cool. So it's, it seems like tech innovations uh, will not only just impact like the spatial and urban uh, planning, but also like the planning process itself. So all kinds of disciplines like the real estate developer, the architects, uh, municipalities are being involved. Can you tell us a little bit about how they need to change to adapt this kind of innovations or technologies? Yeah, I think um, all of them needs to adapt to the, the opportunity to be able to collaborate because now it's it's so hard to kind of get a, a common ground and a common way of discussing um, the issues and the opportunities. So the process is very divided and fragmented. So w with that opportunity, you also need to adapt uh, both in ways of working, but also maybe in uh, in business models and in service models. And for example, for municipalities to actually get involved uh, in a process rather than just, just sitting on the outside and, and making demands. Yeah. And we're seeing that uh, we're even uh, surprised by, uh, or uh, enthusiastic about the, rec the, the uh, reactions we're getting from municipalities and, and also the other stakeholders that they, they're seeing so much value that, that when they actually get into it, they're, they're motivated to do it. So we, we think that this is um, the, the kind of planning process of the future. Nice. So final question for you is, will uh, AI be making the cities of the future? Well, it will not be making the cities of the future. It'll, it will help people make the cities of the future. Uh, we really see that to make AI successful, it needs to be on the shoulder of humans, giving them superpowers and not kind of telling them what to do. That would be like a self-driving car driving where it wants to go. Yeah. Um, you want it to drive where you want it to go, right? So, so you need to put it in the hands of humans and they need to make decisions about how our future cities will be like. Well, nice. I'm looking really forward to have like a lot of fun together with Spacemaker AI because I think you're really changing the industry. So yeah. uh, good luck in the near future. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.